Next up, we have Jenny Ann Dabral with uh, public commenting on manuscripts submitted for publication, when it started, why, pros and cons. So, welcome, Jenny Ann. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Janaini from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And uh, I ask you for your patience uh, because I'm presenting a language that, in a language that's not mine and I feel really nervous. And um, please be patient with my presentation and possible questions. Um, so I've been presenting a public comment on manuscripts to be submitted for publication. And uh, as we, met, you know, we know, uh, commenting is very common in preprints. Uh, preprint is a manuscript posted online and everybody interested can read and comment on it, but there is no formal peer review in preprints. So the focus of my presentation is it's on public comments for manuscripts submitted for peer review in a scientific journal, in a formal journal. Here I have an example of a, a manuscript submitted in a journal for public comments, and as we can see here, we have many types of comments, comments from the authors, uh, invited reviewers, and from the community, that means the public, and also we have uh, comments from the editors. Here, uh, th that manuscript was published by this journal, Atmospheric Chemistry and Physics, uh, published by the Re Re European Geoscience Union, and they have a peer review process that's called interactive review process, where the author submit the manuscript uh, for peer review, and if the manuscript is accepted, it's published in a forum discussion and get comments from invited reviewers by the editor and also from the scientific community. And then the editor makes a decision uh, about uh, the manuscript as, as it's made in the peer, traditional peer review process. And when, did, when public comment start in the peer review journals and why? And what are the pros and cons of public comment in the peer review process? For this presentation, I'm using data from an integrative literature that I conducted in 2022 in Brazil to my thesis. And I have a sample of 20 papers addressing uh, open participation or open peer review, uh, public peer review in scholarly journals. And today I'm going to focus on commenting, as I mentioned before. And as a result, I found that public commenting in scholarly journals, they start before open science. Uh, the first journal to implement an uh, open peer review model with more comments uh, from the readers was the current anthropology. It's still published today by the University of Chicago Press. And the peer review process is called CA treatment. And this CA treatment was applied for review articles. And the idea of this CA treatment, uh, that the editor, after the manuscript is accepted for the peer review process, the editor send the manuscript for a list of re readers, and these readers are divided into two categories. The readers might be experts in the topic of the manuscript, and the readers also uh, may, might be interested in parts of the manuscript. And in both cases, the readers may add material for the discussion, argue the interpretation of the results, or say nothing about the manuscript. Here I have an overview of the first paper published by the journal in 1906. And in the first image, I have an overview of the first page. And here I have this box here in the second picture. And then we, we may see here the, when the manuscript was published, and also we have the name of the reviewers with open identities, and also they explain to the readers uh, how uh, the comments was incorporated in the manuscript and how the uh, reviewers are recognized. And also in that time, reviewers and authors could reply, could interact with, with each other. Here, uh, I'm sorry, come back here. Sorry. Uh, here I have an example. They have this star in the CA treatment. And this star here in the manuscript means that this addition was made uh, by a suggestion of a reviewer. And this is the type of recognition of the reviews at that time. And here we have the comments that was published uh, at the end of the manuscript with the name of the reviewers. And here I have some examples that they are applying uh, models of peer review with uh, multiple uh, reviewer, reviewers. 
And uh, before open science, we have these models with this open peer, com open peer commentary. Or another journals for another disciplines adopt the same model of the current anthropology. And then we have, after open science, we have models with different names as well, like public peer review or open peer review discussion. And here I have, I have three examples, one example from economic field, another one from the uh, health science, and another one from education uh, field. So my data shows that uh, what is the aim of this type of models with public accounting peer review? Uh, they have in common the goal of increase the number of reviewers, bring new perspectives to the manuscripts, and they also are looking for reduced bias of review selection by the editor, and improve the quality and development of research, and also they are looking for improve the read readability of research if the manuscript is easy to understand to people that are not from the same field of study, not from the same discipline, and, and also that are not scientists. They are looking for promoting transparency and collaboration in the peer review process, and also more interaction among authors and reviewers. I would like to focus on these two aspects here, increase the number of reviewers and bring new perspective to the manuscript, because you have a difference between models uh, before open science and after open science, because open science is bringing new types of reviewers to the peer review process. For example, here in the traditional peer review process, we have the editor, we have select reviewers by the editor, and we have indicated reviewers by authors. But in public comments, for example, before open science, we have members of the scientific community. All of these readers from the current anthropology, they are scholars from anthropology and from uh, another field of study. They can be biologists or even for health science. And in, after open science, we have the public. And the public can be uh, scientific members of the scientific community, then can be patients, non-scientists, and also they can be professional of scholarly uh, publishing industry, and also journalists, they can comment on these papers. Um, and th this, this type of reviewers uh, is important to note because they will impact the cons and criticism around uh, peer review models with public comments. Because some, uh, some experts in peer review, they are questioning the qualification of the, re the reviewers. Uh, and also we have the vulner vulnerability of some reviews, identities, for example, as early career researcher. Researchers, they do not feel comfortable to comment on papers uh, authored by senior researchers. And for example, non-scientists and patients, they do not feel comfortable to comment in public because they ask you to, to then like, who I am to comment on a paper written by a scientist. I don't have nothing to say. And also, for example, when you, you may not feel comfortable to comment because you, you may feel fear of, afraid of losing your job. Uh, I don't know. And also we have um, a lack of incentives to comment because the reviewers are not paid. And also some people say that we don't not have time to public comment because it's too hard to find reviewers. And also public comment can introduce new types of bias in the peer review process, such as, for example, a manipulation of the peer review process by authors and the public, and also can be more work for the editor. And as a conclusion, my data shows that public comment can help to improve the quality of the manuscripts, and, but it has been applied like a complement for the peer, traditional peer review process. And however, more studies are required to understand what public comments is adding to peer review process in terms of expertise. And also they are bringing a new role to scholarly journals and peer review because the audience of the scholar journals are changing and broadening by the, since the participation of different types of reviewers and more active, more active role to readers. And, and the scholarly journals, they can be a, a bridge between science and society since uh, uh, when we have, for example, patients engaged in the peer review process, they are helping uh, not only with the lived experience in terms of a disease, for example, but also make uh, the manuscript more easier to understand for people who are not scientists or who are from different disciplines. And my research has a little uh, uh, limitations, for example, in terms of terminology. 
uh, terminology in the peer review process is very inconsistent. Each model has a different model, a uh, different name, and sometimes they do not mean the same thing and not clear in the manuscript that I found. And for example, here I have an example of an initiative uh, by NASO uh, to create a standard terminology for peer review to facilitate the understanding of the open peer review practice and also the implementation by journals. And also, I have a limitation in terms of language because I guess I can find more models of open peer review that are not, they have, they are written in another language that's not English, Portuguese, or Spanish. And for future work, I'm drafting a manuscript about open uh, peer review models with public participation. And I'm drawing different flowcharts explaining these models and how the public can participate. And also, I'm exploring with my mentors in Illinois. Uh, different types of expertise uh, in science and uh, citizen science and how different types of expertise can help to improve the peer review process and the quality of uh, research. And I'm going to stop here, so thank you. Good, we're behind, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.